Sup, chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, let me tell y'all something. Out of all the content I created on this channel, my favorite subject has always been uncovering upcoming treatments in the pipeline. A lot of the content on my channel is extensive coverage of existing FDA-approved treatments like finasteride minoxidil, both of which I have a highly favorable opinion of. But, I kind of like to think of hair loss science the same way I think of an affordable performance car, say like a Mustang, an Acura Integra, or a Hyundai Elantra N. Sure, these vehicles are affordable for most people, and their stock performance gives you a lot of bang for your buck, but there are always going to be some people who want to find innovative ways to get more performance out of these cars, and so they'll modify them. Hair loss research is sort of the same way. Finasteride minoxidil are fantastic, easily obtainable treatments that will give exceptional results to the overwhelming majority of people who use them. But that doesn't mean that there is no room for innovation. There is no such thing as a drug that gives everybody and equally satisfactory result, and that is why here at the Hair Cafe Institute of Scientific Research, we take pride in not just presenting our viewers with an accurate scientific interpretation of existing treatments, but also in giving them transparency as to what to expect from future treatments. That way, everybody who has been afflicted by the slaphead curse can plan their hair loss intervention routine based on what is available to them now, as well as what will be available to them in the future, which is very important because remember, Chooms, fighting androgenic alopecia is a lifelong endeavor. And that is what brings us to the subject of today's video, TDM105795, which henceforth will be known simply as TDM. Will this be an effective weapon to add to our arsenal in the war against the Norwood Reaper, or is this just more broccoli? Well, let's go ahead and go balls deep and find out, my fellow hair loss witchers. So, this TDM stuff has been under study since 2021, so we're talking about a fairly new product here. Despite this, there's already been a phase one study of TDM that enrolled 30 men with androgenic alopecia and was completed in December of 2021. There was also another phase one study that looked at multiple doses of the drug that started in February of 2022. So I'm happy to say that we at least have more than just rat studies with this new drug. Apparently, these phase one studies all went well because in April of this year of 2023, a phase two trial was started. Hair loss research, it usually progresses at a glacial pace. I mean, after all, when was the last time anyone heard anything about clascoterone, for instance? But in this particular case, progress with TDM is progressing full steam ahead with subjects already being enrolled in a phase two trial. This phase two trial will enroll 72 men with androgenic alopecia, and it is planned to be completed by April of 2024, so less than a year. So despite only being introduced a couple of years ago, this hair loss treatment is already approximately in the same stage of development as GT20029, which is also in phase two testing. It's not as far along as pyrolutamide, which is in phase three testing, and will very likely be on the market early next year. But TDM is still far along enough that I think it is worth my attention, as well as the attention of the hair loss community at large. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this drug and see if it is worth getting excited about. So. What is TDM? First of all, it's being developed by a Chinese drug company, but it's not Kintor this time. Instead, it is a company called Technoderma Medicines, which is a name that sounds like it came straight from Cyberpunk 2077. In addition to TDM105795, Technoderma is also developing a JAK inhibitor drug called TDM180935 for the treatment of atopic dermatitis. So it is a company that is really aimed at treating dermatological conditions, including androgenic alopecia, which I apply Lot, of course, but I sure hope they come up with trade names for their product soon because these chemical names make it pretty easy to confuse the two. By the way, speaking of jack inhibitors, if you want to know more about those products, I did a video of them which I'll link below. Anyways, what is this drug and how does it work? Is it an androgen receptor blocker like pyrolutamide? Is it a small interfering RNA molecule like Cosma RNA? Does it annihilate androgen receptors the way GT20029 does? Well, it looks like that the answer to these questions is none of the above. It turns Turns out that TDM works by a completely different mechanism than any other hair loss treatment on the market today. It's still a little mysterious because the drug is proprietary and the press announcements from the company are aimed more at investors and stockholders than actual scientists, but I think there is still enough data in these announcements as well as in the patent for the drug that was filed to figure out how it works exactly. The clue I found is located here in the recent press announcement. It says, quote, 
TDM105795 is a small molecule drug candidate being developed as a topical drug for treatment of androgenic alopecia. As a potent thyromimetic, it may offer significant advantages regarding efficacy and safety compared to existing treatments." Unquote. The key word to remember here is thyromimetic. Thyromimetic literally means that the drug acts like thyroid hormone. So what does thyroid hormone have to do with hair growth? Well, way back in 2010, a study was published that looked at a thyromimetic drug simply referred to as Compound 5. The study looked at the effect of this drug on hair growth in bald stump-tailed macaca monkeys. Macaca monkeys are one of the very few species besides humans who develop androgenic alopecia, so they are sometimes used to test hair loss drugs on. Though, of course, ultimately, it's always necessary to test drugs on humans because no animal model exactly mimics human physiology. The investigators decide to look at drugs that mimic the effects of thyroid hormone because thyroid hormone is important for hair growth. People with low thyroid levels can develop diffuse hair loss, and hair growth is a side effect of treatment with thyroid hormone. In vitro studies have shown that thyroid hormone prolongs the antigen growth phase in human hair follicles, as well as stimulating keratin production and hair pigmentation. Human hair follicles have what's called a thyroid beta-1 receptor, and stimulating this receptor stimulates hair growth. So you may wonder, why not just take thyroid hormone in order to stimulate hair growth? Well, normally the body produces just the right amount of thyroid hormone that it needs, and if you take extra, you end up with hyperthyroidism, which amongst many other problems is toxic to the heart. It also makes your eyes bulge out, which is pretty disturbing. So in this study, the investigators looked at several molecules that stimulated the thyroid receptors of the hair follicles. They were trying to find one specifically that could be used topically and that would have low systemic absorption as well as fast clearance from the bloodstream if it did get absorbed. They settled on a molecule called PF002767. 7343, which they simply call throughout the paper as compound 5. So, after figuring out how to synthesize this compound, they applied it topically to the macaca monkeys and achieved increased hair growth with a minimum effective dosing concentration of 0.1%. The drug was even more effective in a mouse model with a minimum effective concentration of just 0.003%. There was no skin irritation from the drug, and serum levels of the drug were undetectable in the bloodstream. There was also no evidence of any effects on thyroid function in the animals tested. So, this study was actually done by researchers at Pfizer, but I haven't heard anything further about this Pfizer Compound 5. However, I suspect that TDM is something similar that is picking up where research on Compound 5 left off. So, from this patent application for TDM, this is the chemical structure of the drug. The patent shows shows the effects of applying the drug topically to the backs of shaved mice. The images from the patent aren't very good quality, but they show that in the areas that receive the drugs, there is good hair growth, while in the areas that just received a placebo treatment, there is virtually no hair growth at all. The patent then goes on to describe testing of the drug on the thyroid beta receptor. The results showed that the TDM strongly stimulates this receptor, as you can see in this graph right here. So. This proves that indeed, TDM works by stimulating the thyroid receptors of the hair follicles, which really is a completely new type of hair growth treatment. Now, I don't think that this mechanism is specific to androgenic alopecia, even though all the clinical studies so far have been on men with androgenic alopecia. Rather, I think what we're looking at here is more of a general hair growth stimulant like minoxidil, except possibly even more effective, or at least working through a different mechanism, meaning that it could stack with other hair growth drugs like minoxidil and 5-AR inhibitors. Anyways, it looks like the preliminary Phase 1 results have been very encouraging. According to the press release for the Phase 2 trial, quote, Preclinical assessment of TDM105795 indicates that it has poor systemic absorption following topical application and a short elimination half-life, features well-suited to avoid unwanted systemic effects, unquote. The press release also states that, quote, Phase 1 clinical testing showed it to have favorable safety profile and to be well-tolerated, unquote. So we don't have any more details than that since this is a proprietary compound being developed by a Chinese company, but they are going through the FDA process and it seems like the mechanism of action of this drug is completely new and the preliminary human results are encouraging. We don't have a full idea of the drug's safety profile yet, but considering the low rate of systemic absorption, it is very possible that this treatment could work locally as an effective growth stimulant like minoxidil, which could mean it could be used as a good alternative for people who do not respond 
respond well to topical minoxidil, or in the best case scenario, it may end up being something so effective that it is outright better than minoxidil. But we'll have to wait and see. But fortunately, being that it has been only a couple of years and we're already into phase two trials, it may not be too long before we can get our hands on this one. So this is another one to keep an eye on, Chooms. And as a hair loss switcher myself, I'll be keeping you posted on this one when there's more news available. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all again soon. God bless.